Okay, vision offset, just doing a logic. Um, we're going to create a new process. We're going to call it dice logic. Click OK. Go up here to edit it, double click. And in here, we're going to use a camera calibration. I know that my most recent uh, Vision 213 is the most accurate. Um, I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit and within this process here what we're going to be doing is using a GPM tool uh, GPM locator tool and within this GPM locator tool we're going to actually add blob blob locator and remember the difference is this is looking for a pattern which could be very complex and non-continuous or non-contiguous a blob is looking for one um, edge that is continuous, what's called a contiguous object, and blob stands for binary large object. Within the blob locator, we're going to use the count tool, so we're going to go to back up to the GPM level and create a space for our count tool. This count tool will actually count the number of blobs, which is the, the number of dots that are on the face of the die. All right, let's look at a, a general overview here. We've got the GPM, and it's going to locate the basic shape of the dice. The blob tool is going to count the number of dots, so you're going to teach this blob tool to look at a single dot. And when it sees six dots, the count, or however many dots with on the face of the die, um, one through six, the count tool is actually going to determine that. And then within the GPM, we have one more tool and that is the um, conditional execution tool, the CET it's called. And within the conditional execution tool, there's a few steps that we have to take to change the model ID to represent the number of dots seen on the dice. And what action to take once you add that value to the, to the model ID. Um, so we look at it and say value one, because you can have uh, five different values here. Um, is going to be based on the count tool and it's going to be the number of found of, of the blobs. Um, the condition is um, value one, that's this up here, is we're going to say equal to um, two, which means it's found two blobs. We're going to come down here now and say if, and this is the action or the then, when the condition is true, we are going to add the following value to the model ID, and that's going to be 1. So now, initially, everything's going to have model ID 1. But now when it finds two blobs, it's going to add 1 to that model ID and make the model ID 2. All right? And then last, if we have a model ID that, um, to invalidate this re result, add the following to the model ID. Let's just leave it at the default 100. And that just gives you some value now. If you do a vision run find and the model ID ends up equal 100, you know that's just, it didn't find anything. So it could be an error, you could do what you want with it and go home. So let's add one more. We're gonna add a total of five of these because the one dice is taken care of. It's a model ID one. We don't need a CET for it. But we're gonna need one for two, three, four, five, and six. So we're gonna have five CETs here. So we have our five CETs, our conditional execution tools, and now, um, so tool one is for two dots, tool two is going to be for three dots. So when the, when the constant here is three, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to add a one to it, I'm sorry, we're going to add a two to it, and now the model ID is going to equal three. So the model ID in, in our uh, setup here is always going to equal the number of dots or blobs seen on the dice or the value of the dice. So we go into uh, tool three, which is actually four, four dots. Um, we're leaving this the same every time. Well, we did was copy the first one four times. Um, when the value is equal to, and we're gonna put three, I'm sorry, four, we're gonna add three to the dice, all right? And then we go to four, add a five to it, and add a four to there. And with the last one, we're gonna add six to it and a five to it. So basically our base is always one down here and we're gonna add um, 
the number of blobs found minus one to get the to get back to the actual value of the number of blobs. Now um, let's go back to our tree. Look at our GPM locator and teach the shape of the um, of the dice. So let's go in here and do a um, snap and do a teach. And I'm going to center this box around my target. And I'm going to do a mask inside here. All right, that's probably good. Click OK. I've taught it the GPM. Uh, when I'm sure that the model ID, because of all the, the CETs I just spent up, the, the conditional execution tools, was based on the model ID being one. I want to make sure that's there. Now, now let's set the search window. I don't need to search over in this black area because that's area where the dice can't even land. So this will shorten your scan time for your uh, vision process. And as a safe measure, I'm going to save, go up to the process tree, come down to the blob locator, and now teach the dot within the GPM. Um, if I do a snap, zoom in, so again, our next step is to actually teach a blob, and we'll snap, zoom in something that's more realistic like this, and then we'll go up here to this, and then we'll go up here to teach, and zoom in again, grab just one blob, but we have to get a surrounding black pixel too to be able to get a border around that blob. So make sure you got at least one black pixel around your blob. And I'll go up to 800%. I don't want to get this white pixel in there. That should be good. And click OK. And that's my blob. It looks like a pretty good uh, taut pattern. Now let's, or I should say taut blob. And let's go ahead and do a snap. Find. And it should find that one blob. Okay, uh, it's not until we go up the process tree and click under single vision that we'll actually find multiple blobs. There's one more thing that we have to do and that's go into the count tool and click this guy and then click that it's going to count the blobs, the actual blob locator tool. Um, and model ID, nope, don't use it. That's already set up by the blob tool itself. Um, and then we already have all these set up. So now we should be able to go up the tree to the vision process. We go back to the vision process and we notice we don't have a green um, um, header on this guy. We actually have a red um, indicator that says we're not finished. So there's something we have to do yet. Um, and if we look down here, we haven't set a user frame, which in my case right here, I would recommend you set up a user frame that is where your vision is going to be done. Um, in my case right now, I'm going to go ahead and use zero because I don't have a user frame set up. But this would definitely be your application frame where your vision work would actually be done. And then I'm going to go down here and set the rough position status. So I have to do a snap, find, and do a set ref pause. And we should be good. Let's save this. One more thing, looking at the blob tool, I'm not sure if I set the search window area. I actually need to set that out to my full um, application area, wherever the dice can land within the um, user frame. All right, we're going to click OK, save, click our process, and do a snap, find. And because our vision isn't set up too well, which you know the key to this is always having good lighting at the very beginning. I look at this and I'm only finding two blobs on my dice. So for some reason, even though that seems like it has a high contrast area, um, that's not working. That's not going to satisfy the condition. The only thing we can do now is come back to the blob tool and say, be more forgiving. So I came back and did a snap find within the blob tool and it found all three. But if you look at, if you look at the area, um, that is real close to the minimum value here. So I'm going to bump this guy down. That's probably why it didn't find it within my complete process. As the process went down and found the GPM and then looked for the blobs, 
this number three, for the first time, they're never the same. You know, you, every two uh, run, run vision finds, you're going to find different results. And it didn't, it probably bumped below 217. So I'm hoping that if I set this down to 210, um, it'll be more forgiving and find it. In fact, I'll go to 205. And I'll save this. And then go back up my process tree to the full process and do a snap find and now I found the other two um, for some reason now it doesn't like finding this guy so I have to play around with the blob parameters and do a snap find you can see there's some irregularity at this uh, top of the number three dot um, and I have to figure out what what of these parameters is borderline over here um, so looking at this information here I can get rid of some of the parameters that may be losing or not catching this blob um, in the snap find by deselecting calculate angle we really don't in this in this application don't care about the angle now we get rid of the semi major and semi minor and elongation now we have just these three parameters upper and lower min and max uh, parameters to be concerned with so if you look at um, perimeter here and I look at perimeter and number two is the one that failed 59 is looking like a decent uh, value for between 49 and 73 um, and I follow again with the one that's airing out that's not finding number two and I look over at um, circularity and it's 0.9 well 0.9 might be getting close to this right here remember the the score value over here is, uh, and whether it passes or not, is not, if everything definitely fits within these, um, it's more of a overall calculation. So let's bump this up to, say, 1.3. And save. Let's go back up our process tree here. Run the vision process fully again. Uh, snap. Find. And we're getting it, but that's looking a little messy. We'll run with it for right now. So let's see if um, let's see if we turn the dice here now. If it starts to recognize the different uh, numbers, and you notice our model ID, it snapped, found the three blobs. And if we go to the execution number two, it says if it found three blobs, add two to the model ID. And sure enough, it did. It added two to the model ID of one because it found three blobs. Now let's see if we can snap some others and, and get some accurate model IDs set to the values of the, of the face of the die. Okay, so we're not getting very good hits on our blob tool. And if we snap, find, we notice we're only getting three here. Um, snap, find, three pretty regularly. But I want to get better than that, so I'm going to lower my min here to, let's say, 100. And I'm going to do a snap, find, Yep, I'm finding all five. So that should get us pretty accurate um, with all the rest of the faces of the die. And now if I come up to the process level, do a snap, find, hey, look at the model ID. It equals the number of dots because of our conditional execution tool right here says, if I find five dots, add four to the model ID, and that's what it's done. And now we'll try one more just to prove this in. All right, so I put um, the one uh, face of the die up, and I'm going to do a snap, find, and sure enough, my model ID, look up to the process tool here, right, snap, find, model ID one, it's found one dot. So that's a setup for finding the value of the dice. If you have any questions, uh, come see me.